What's up guys and welcome back. My name is Carl Froen, CEO and designated broker for Kenneth James Realty and today we're going to get into what I call the affordability index and really getting our heads around why we've seen such a rapid appreciation in the housing prices over the last 12 months and I will break it down for you step by step. So kind of give you some historical examples but let me give you a little bit of background first. I call it the affordability index. If you guys go on Google you're going to see something substantially different than this. Uh, they talk about housing prices in different areas of the country. I don't know a better way to actually describe this, so I'm going to use affordability index. I made that up, dang it, so don't kill me for that in the comments. Uh, look, if we're looking at a fixed payment, you know, somebody has got a fixed payment, they can spend $2,000 a month. They can't spend any more than that because they're maybe a W-2 employee, they have a fixed income, uh, their debt to income ratio won't allow them to spend more than $2,000 a month. Well, what will that get them in terms of a mortgage? if we look at the monthly payments. And so we understand that a fixed payment of $2,000 a month at 18% on a 30-year fixed would get you roughly about $130,000 mortgage. And so if we just drop the rates down to 7%, which is really what we saw, you know, 18% probably, you know, in the mid-80s, and those of you guys were around for that, I was, uh, I remember getting 18% mortgage was like a good thing. And you're like, oh my God, that's a great thing. We'll get you hooked up. If you guys go back to Wall Street, that movie, the original with Charlie Sheen, you'll see that in there. Um, and then if we look at 7%, 7% is where I entered the market probably in the, in the uh, late part of 2000 and really seeing that the interest rates were coming down from the 9s down into the 8s, down into the 7s. After 2001 happened, um, those interest rates down got into the 6s and we're like, everybody's going to refi. And that's where we saw that massive appreciation that we that run up to 2008. And we can see the setup here. And I'm not going to lead to any conclusions. I'm going to tell you, you know, what I think of the market and what it's going to be in a year or two years. I can't predict that. But what I can say is that you know, this should play a lot into what the housing market looks like, whether it be a seller market, a neutral market, or a buyer's market. And if we look at where we were just about a year ago today, this is February 23rd of 2021. If we look at a year ago, we didn't really know what we were in for, to say the least. Uh, what a stinking mess coronavirus has been. But there have been some uh, good things out of that, and that would be that the interest rates have really come down to about 2.625% on a 30-year fixed. Now, there was a small rate bump uh, early in the week, and I don't know what that is to market volatility, whatever that is due to that, uh, that'll play out long term. But you know, right now, you can roughly find a 30-year fix at 2.625%, maybe it's 2.75%, depends on what part of the country you're in and what loan amount you're looking at too. So let's just look at it this way, you know, a $130,000 house uh, back in the mid-80s, you know, uh, at 7% it'd be about a $300,000 house, 4.5% maybe a $400,000 house, not accounting for inflation, a lot of other different factors. And we see over the last year, this has really played itself out. So if we look at, you know, looking at a $400,000 house a year ago, why is it worth $500,000 now? And you can see it's about a 25% increase in pricing. And a lot of that is due to this, this fixed payment amount. And so if you think about it, as interest rates came down, basically everything went on sale. So a $400,000 mortgage, you know, at 2.625%, somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, is probably about $1,600 is my guess. I'm just guessing. I don't know that for sure. It's about $1,600, maybe a little bit more. But understanding that, you know, $400 a month, everything just literally went on sale all at one time. And so you look at housing as being very, very cheap. And understanding that the data that appraisers use is about 60 days old. And they can't compensate for a rapidly changing market where we have double digit appreciation. And so that's why that lags. And so the, the limiting factor here a lot of times is going to be the appraisal value and not necessarily the market value. So I need you to understand that appraisal value is much different than market value, especially in a rapidly appreciating or depreciating market. And understanding that asking price has nothing to do with either of those things. And so you can have an asking price of a dollar and people will bid it up to whatever the market price is. That might not actually appraise. And those are three different values that you should consider when making offers or receiving offers in this crazy market. So hopefully this breaks it down for you. Hopefully this explains a lot. Um, you know, we have seen about 20% appreciation here in the Phoenix metro market. I'm guessing, just based on this example here, if interest rates stay the same and everything else stays the same, we should see an, an appreciation of about another 5% in understanding that, you know, if interest rates change, that may um, do one of these things here, go up or go down, depending on what interest rates do. So that is it for today. If you haven't already, please take two seconds to like and subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. And maybe leave a nice comment. It always makes me feel warm and fuzzy. And that uh, encourages me to do more videos. So thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you. Get out there, kick some ass, have a prosperous day, and I will see you very, very soon. Thanks, take care, see ya.